What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. It's where we go back. We can give you all of your past seven days of tech news in one single video. And in this video, we talk about the Galaxy S23 Ultra. We talk about specs and features and release dates on this phone. We talk about two new products coming out from Samsung that have never been released before. And we talk about so much more, including the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and software updates and everything else. Enjoy this week, and we'll see you in the next one. Our first story, both stories actually are about the Galaxy S23 phones. The first one though is a new product that's coming out during the release of those Galaxy S23 phones, which the phones, the accessories, all that stuff will be out in most likely a February of 2023. And they're coming out, it looks like, with a new charger, a wireless charger that will take into consideration that it'll have Bluetooth built inside the wireless charger. Now, why would you want Bluetooth built into the wireless charger? charger well there's a couple of things i can personally think of one would be maybe a speaker of some sort so you can play your music through it and give you a little bit better sound um, anthony comes up with the idea of maybe it's going to be some kind of uh, smart hub for smart things station but i don't if it just has bluetooth i would think it's not going to have that in there so it remains to be seen what would they put in there why would this wireless charging pad need bluetooth i think the speaker thing is probably the best idea that i can personally think of but I'll let you guys figure that out as well. Put your ideas in the comments. And our last story of the day is about the Galaxy S23 phones and the pre-order gifts that will potentially come along with it. Samsung always gives pre-order gifts whenever you pre-order one of their devices. This year won't be any different, it looks like. And this is KT, is, it's, this information's coming from KT, which is South Korea's second largest wireless carrier over there and they got a little a little picture got leaked out i'm not going to post it uh, for copyright reasons but ultimately a picture got posted out and it showed that that if you pre-order a galaxy s23 device that you will get free or reduced galaxy buds pro 2 earbuds and you know what it's going to air tracking or pre-order gifts are almost always different all throughout the world in america the last couple of years it's been like yeah, pre-order the phone and you get 100 or 200 or $250 worth of trade in uh, or credits that you can use within our store to buy whatever you want at that point of purchase. This is in Korea, so it's giving Galaxy Buds Pro 2 uh, for free or reduced price. Reduced price if you're gonna get one of the lesser S23 or 23 Pluses, free if you get the Pro version. And it'll probably be something similar around here. I still think in America it'll be a dollar amount that you can use or credit, whatever you wanna call it, within the store. I don't think they're gonna be like, you can only get Buds Pro 2. Our first story of the day has to do with Amazon Music. Amazon Music, if you didn't know, because they're the competitor to Spotify and Apple Music and some other music services on the block. But a lot of people already have Amazon Prime. I mean, myself has Amazon Prime and a lot of you guys have it as well. Well, they just updated their perks with Amazon Prime to include Amazon Music and basically their full library. So you will get over 100 million songs to listen to on Amazon Music. Now, the big caveat from this is that in order to use it, you have to be in shuffle. You can only shuffle the music, which could be a little bit of a hindrance uh, to some folks. If it's not though, I mean, it's great because you don't have to pay for music basically. And you get the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts as well. Exclusive podcasts just to Amazon. And then, like I said, the ad-free music increasing from 2 million songs to 100 million songs in shuffle mode. All access playlists where you can pick and play any song. So you do have a little bit of control, but this is great news. So if you don't want to pay or you stop paying or you're not paying for music, but you have Amazon Prime, now you have access basically to their whole entire catalog. Check it out. It's available now. You can listen to it on your phone with the uh, Amazon Music app or your computer or pretty much anywhere else. Last story of the day is about the first Android phone ever that came out, which was the T-Mobile G1 phone from HTC. Now this phone came out 179 bucks on a two year contract. First Android phone ever. Came out, I believe it was a year and a half after the iPhone actually came out. But this is crazy because it's popping up again because there was a tweet that was put out, a little you know story basically from Rich Miner. He started off talking about Meta and Facebook and how they're doing things versus how Android did it back in the day. But basically, he goes on to say that all along we were working on two phones, sooner 
more Blackberry-like and Dream touchscreen based. After the iPhone launched, he said they canceled sooner to focus on Dream eventually turning into the G1 phone, but its design changed little from its rendering made five months before the iPhone launched. And he shows this phone off. Now I wanna show you first what the original one looks like. This is what the original one, uh, the actual came out. And you can see it is pretty refined. It's almost very close to what we have now. Obviously it has physical buttons and a slide out keyboard, but if you minus that stuff out and think about what we have as phones with back buttons, home buttons and all that, it's fairly similar. Now here's his phone or the phone that they were also working on and it's kind of crazy looking. You know, at the bottom of the phone, you can see that you have uh, on the screen even, it looks like you have an email button and an at symbol to press right physical buttons on there. You see the Google branding on top of the display as well, as well as a, a microphone at the top in the middle. When you go all the way to the bottom, starting on the left, you see, it looks like that's how you would answer calls and they're physical buttons. You see a physical home button, you see a physical back button, and then you see a directional controller of some sort that would allow you to control the phone from there without probably having to touch the display. And then ultimately the keyboard when it's slid, uh, slid open. It's just such an interesting looking thing. He goes on to say that Steve Jobs was not happy about Android being an important and being an important partner. They made small changes to appease him before launch saying we were duping Apple is wrong. Android was developed at the same time with no information flow. Uh, similarities were based on similar tech and constraints. So basically, Who's Rich Miner? He helped create Android. It, Android was created in around 2005 uh, with the company that he was, I guess, owned. And then they sold it to, to Google. Google bought it. But ultimately, it's kind of, it's so interesting to see these devices. I almost want to get my hands on one of these devices and like play with it and be like, whoa, this is so much worse than what we have now. Or, or you know what? There's some things about this that I did like about it. It's just so cool how technology has evolved from you know that time period of 2008 to getting you know candy bar type phones to now getting my folding phones charging folding phones and rolling phones and you know the blackberries that were out after even this that had full-on keyboards there's like so many devices that came before and after and how they just all melted into this different design and how and where they're going from here on out so it's really really cool stuff i was just looking down at my galaxy z fold 4 and i'm thinking man they must be working on the galaxy z fold 5 right well they are and we've got some information on the z fold 5 and the z fold line in general um, because there's an article that was put out by the elect over in Korea, I almost said North Korea. Whew, thank God I didn't say that one. South Korea. And they talk about um, information that they're hearing about Samsung Galaxy Z Fold phones. And before we jump into that information, I do want to say that they do mention that Samsung expects Apple to come out with a folding device by 2024, which is pretty crazy because that's literally, I mean, we're not in 2023, we're almost to 2023, basically like a year or two from now, depending upon how you look at the year 2024. Um, they expect it not to be coming out on phones for Apple in 2024, but in tablets and or laptops. So if you're hoping, like myself, was hoping for a, a foldable phone from Apple, it looks like it's gonna come to their tablets and computers first. Without further ado, let's just jump into this article from the elect. So the headline reads, Samsung MX, expects foldable market to grow by 80% per year by 2025. These are huge, huge numbers of potentially how big of a market could come for these folding phones. And I've said it before that these folding phones, I do expect almost everybody and their mother to have a folding phone within the next five years. And if they get growth like that, you're pretty much almost guaranteed by a certain time frame to see something like that. But they go on to say that, uh, sources say while Foldable smartphones only account for 1% of total market share. Samsung has shared some challenges that it believes in suppliers need to overcome for foldable phones to become even more popular. Some of these challenges include making the phone weigh less and to be thinner and more durable. Also while reducing the crease on the screen 
having a designated slot for the S Pen, and improving the camera. Samsung also asked that the vibration motor vibrate more and development of new materials that can reduce the weight of foldable phones. The Czech tech giant had initially planned to have as a designated slot for the S Pen on the Z Fold 4. Samsung had also wanted a more high-end camera module on the Fold 4, but these plans were also scraped due to weight and thickness limitations. But we're gonna kinda go back to what they said on that, you know, that main line where they talk about the needing the phones to weigh less and be thinner and more durable. Let's talk about that line. So right then and there, thinner, more durable, weigh less. That's a huge thing. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm so used to these phones, it doesn't bug me at all, but I can totally imagine people will want it to weigh less, definitely be more durable without a doubt, and be thinner, definitely. Those are huge, huge selling points for mass market appeal. The other part of it is the crease. I am so used to it, but one of the big things that people notice is the crease on the screen. They're like, ah, don't you, get, don't you hate that? I'm like, do you, do you hate the notch? Do you hate the pinhole camera on there? You get used to it, it doesn't bug you at all, but it is something that catches people's eye. Integrated S Pen would be great instead of having it on the outside of the phone and also having the best cameras on there, not the second tier of cameras. So those are huge, huge takeaways that are gonna be great if they're in the Z Fold 5 or some other future, near future, Galaxy Z Fold phone. I wonder why I'm holding up my Galaxy Z Fold 4. Well, I have a very good reason because there was a new update for it. So I have the One UI 5 beta. There was an update pushed out for this that had a bunch of bug fixes. It was like a 500 meg update. And this is what it brought with it. So basically it says bugs that have been fixed. Battery consumption fast. So meaning that it's burning through battery life. Forced closed when setting the shortcuts on both sides while editing the lock screen. Korean is not entered when connecting Bluetooth keyboards. Status bar disappears. Samsung Pay does not run as a gesture in a folding state. Camera app forced close. Cover screen ratio and function error and other minor bug fixes. I read through this list of things that it fixed. I'll be honest with you. None of this kind of sing, <laughs> rings true. Battery consumption fast. I'll be honest, the battery always dies pretty fast on these Galaxy phones for me, personally. Battery, uh, the forced close when shortcuts, I don't even, I don't, I, nothing, that didn't stand out to me. Obviously I don't use Korean, so I'm not gonna know anything about that. Status bar disappearing, I didn't notice that happening to me. Samsung Pay, I don't use it, so I don't know. Camera app forced close, that didn't happen to me. Cover screen ratio and function error. Didn't notice if it was even doing it, and it, so I don't think it was happening to me. And other minor bug fixes. So for me, this is like almost like a non-update because nothing seemed to really stick out about that. It's been running rock solid. No real issues that I can even think about that maybe didn't happen before or you know just weird things. So I'm giving it a rock solid uh, uh, rating so far to get the beta. If you still can, I think it's closed, but you can always check in the Samsung members at my first story of the day has to do with good luck if you don't know you should know what good luck is if you follow my channel you know what good luck is good luck is the app for samsung galaxy phones that allows you to customize your phone in a bunch of different ways there's so many different modules in here that can do so many things nice catch will catch your notifications one hand operation makes it easier to use your phone with one hand sound assistant can change all kinds of sound sounds up in there um, blah, 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 blah. Pentastic is good for your S Pen. Theme Park helps decorate your phone in different ways. There's tons in here. That's just some of the ones that I mentioned. There's a new one coming out. I'm a little fuzzy on fully what it ends up doing, but ultimately what it's called is Dropship. And basically, it's, I looked for it, I can't get it yet, but it should be launching soon. You can sideload it if you want, if you go to this. Um, this link, this this Twitter. Ultimately, it says new GoodLock plugin, Dropship. You can share any files that you want, and it sounds like the way it works is you can do it remotely. It doesn't sound like you have to be right next to the person. It sounds like it's akin to something like Send Anywhere. I'm not sure if it works across platforms. I'm assuming it does, but ultimately, because the when he when he shared it, he shares a QR code that you would scan with your phone and it would bring you to a website or something. And I know Samsung already has a file sharing thing that they have on there, um, which I can't think of what it's called is. I don't mean like quick share, I mean like so you can send big files, but it's like through a link and a website. I think this is somewhat different. 
So I'm not fully, fully sure, but Dropship is the new one coming out. Um, expect to have it, I would expect this week, next week, but very, very soon to officially show up in the Good Lock app. Again, I don't have it. I checked my Galaxy Store updates to make sure there wasn't an update for Good Lock and I also went into Good Lock, closed it out, reopened it, checked both uh, tabs. I don't personally have it, but check if you have it. It seems like something cool. It seems like something I'm actually gonna use a lot. So Dropship, coming soon, kinda, or you can get it right now if you want to sideload it to Good Lock. And our last story of the day has to do with the Galaxy S23 phones, 23, 23 plus 23 Ultra, and when the phone is going to be released. Looks like it's going to be released very, very soon, earlier than the past couple of phones that have come out for Samsung. This is coming over from Korea, Cho Sun website. I'll link it down below if you wanna read the full article, saying Galaxy S23 to be unveiled in the first week of February next year, AKA 2023. Early release as the market contacted. I mean, now this is translated, so it's gonna read a little bit weird, but ultimately they're saying that the first week of February next year, the phone will come out and it's the fastest ever three to four weeks earlier than usual. They go on to say that a business official familiar with Samsung said on the third, Samsung is planning to hold an unpacked event in San Francisco in the first week of February next year to unveil its next product. Considering that Samsung Electronics has usually held a public event and released the product in, on Fridays in two weeks, Samsung S23 series is expected to be available for purchase around February 17th next year. So think about this. So what we're talking about, sounds like February 3rd is gonna be when it launches or is at least unveiled somewhere there. And then February 17th is when you'd actually be able to pick it up, get it in your hand. You'd probably have it around Valentine's Day because if you order it online, they generally send these phones out to your house two to three days before release date. So you're looking at that week, February 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 17th, uh, 16th, 17th, when you'd have it in hand for the Galaxy S23 phones. It also sounds like they're gonna do an unpacked event not a virtual one, but a real one where media, such as myself, um, could attend these events. Maybe they'll have fans as well, and you'd be able to attend the event and check out the phone firsthand before it even is released into the public. So very, very interesting stuff. We will keep our eyes peeled to this release. This story is a new product category for Samsung. It's not a new product category for tech overall, but for Samsung it will be, and it has to do with a smart ring that you would wear, like a wedding ring of some sort, but you know, just a regular ring that you would wear that could do and capture information. So let's check this out. This information is coming out from RJ and he's saying uh, the Samsung smart ring is coming. Here's what we know based on leaks. Up to 10 days of battery life before it needs to get charged. Ability to control your smartphone, your tablet, your TV. Uh, it's gonna get your heart rate and ECG monitoring built in, more accurate health tracking compared to a smartwatch, and it may come with NFC, which if it does, it'd be, it, it, it would be huge because of the reason that you could do mobile payments. So what's some other things that could possibly be in there? I think one of the big things would be notifications. Obviously, it doesn't look like it's gonna have a display, I don't think. I don't think, maybe it will, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be a display, but just being able to ring uh, or vibrate a certain way on your finger so that you know you have a notification, I think that would be absolutely massive and very cool. Um, charging it, is it gonna be wireless? Is it gonna have a USB-C port? I'm assuming it's gonna charge like a watch where it kind of just like sits on top of something and it charges. Beyond that, I do love the NFC, being able to use that for mobile payments if you don't have a smartwatch and just kind of put your ring down, that's great. Um, you don't have to worry about it falling off. Like, not that a watch falls off, but I mean, a ring, especially for 10 days, you can sleep with that all the time. You could probably get sleep tracking of some sort on there to let you know how long you've been sleeping. I can see that being in there. Basically, it's everything a watch is for the most part without maybe a screen on it, which if you don't care about telling the time on your wrist or reading an exact notification or responding to it, then this is gonna be perfect for that. Um, I do love that it is, I'm curious actually, before I say I love it, curious how it's gonna control your phone, your tablet and your TV. How would it actually do that? What's it gonna do to control my phone and tablet? That would be kind of interesting, but otherwise I kind of am digging this. This is something that I potentially might be interested in. I don't wear jewelry, I don't like rings, I'll be honest with you, but I don't know, if it fits nice and it's easy to put on and take off, 
I might be interested in this. First story of the day has to do with the Galaxy Watch 4 and an update that Samsung pushed out and has now rescinded, AKA pulled back because it's killing people's watches. That's right. Um, I know I saw this somewhere else, but ultimately I'm pulling this uh, from Twitter. And Mr. Gary is saying that notification regarding a software update and power off phenomenon. First of all, we sincerely apologize to our customers for any convenience in using our products. Recently, it was confirmed that some products do not turn on after software VI3 update on Galaxy Watch 4 models. Users who have experienced this problem, please visit the nearest Samsung Electronics Service Center and we will take necessary measures, including free repairs. So ultimately, like I said, Galaxy, AKA Samsung has pulled this update back, but if your Galaxy Watch 4 isn't turning on after doing an update, contact Samsung, especially if you live in America. A lot of us, we don't have a lot of repair centers out here for um, stuff like that. I mean, I guess there's third party repair centers, but other than that, you're better off probably just calling Samsung, telling them the situation. If you're, again, if your Galaxy Watch 4 is not turning on after their most recent update, if you got it before they pulled it. And our last story, as you can see from the tweet, Ice Universe is saying the S23 Ultra camera can surprise us in at least three ways. What could those three ways be? Let's kind of count the ways of how this Galaxy S23 Ultra can blow us away. 200 megapixel camera, that over, that's over the 108 megapixel camera of the previous generation. You're probably also looking at, because we've heard about this, better night mode photography uh, with better images overall within that. You also have to imagine that we're gonna get better quality photos during daylight and just all of that would be improved as well as better video. Why wouldn't they give us better quality looking video? It hasn't been talked about a lot. It has not definitely been leaked out and it might not even be true, which is my thought. I'm assuming we'll probably see a better zoom, better than 100X, but that remains to be seen. But other than the things that I mentioned, what else do you think we will see in terms of you know, three or more things that will improve with the Galaxy S23 Ultra camera. Leave it in the comments down below. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you down the road. Peace.